In this session, I want to explain a very important concept, which is the concept of technological modeling. At least this is how we called it on research based on the four-week MBA project. Now, if you know about the Barber strategy, which is a concept, very important concept explained by Nassim Nicholas Taleb, where you have a barbell where on the opposite sides you have, uh, let's say, um, two opposite, what they might seem two opposite strategies, but they end up really balancing things up in the, in the, in the long term. So with technological modeling, we use the same logic to actually balance out how a company manages and handles uh, innovation in the long term. So on the one side, you get continuous innovation. On the other side, you get breakthrough innovation. So if you go, if you know how a barbell strategy works, on the one side, you have a conservative, very conservative approach. On the other side, you have a more extreme and much more uh, aggressive approach. The conservative approach for a startup would be the continuous the continuous innovation approach where you have incremental R&D. So think of the case of a software platform which gets better uh, day after day as it gets uh, more feedback from, from users. While this platform might be you know, more valuable to user, it is also true that over time this might be actually uh, you know, get replaced by a whole new technology. And as a company, you also want to make sure that you're able to understand what's going on on the other side. So think of the case, for instance, uh, of, uh, let's say, video conferencing, right? If you're a company like, uh, like Zoom, you are invested 100% on, on video conferencing. And for you, as you're improving the video conference platform on a continuous basis, you're making the software way more smooth, you're growing, you're growing your enterprise-based customer, you're making your free product and enterprise product much better every day. But the problem is, uh, is that who knows, in a decade, uh, the, the VR uh, meetings uh, might take over. And that is a completely, that is a completely different kind of product. So it's not, you're not going to go from video conferencing to VR with a continuous improvement approach. Instead, what is going to happen is that you need to start exploring also breakthrough innovation. So you are on the video conferencing side, but then you start exploring things like, uh, you know, VR conferencing or stuff like that. Things that might work, for instance, in the future. This is uh, just an example might not turn out to be this way at all but just as an example you start exploring and placing bets on new product ideas that completely move uh, away from you know this um, this uh, uh, main product a key example of that of course uh, we can take also an example uh, um, of a company like uh, like Apple, when it was actually building its uh, its iPhone, the iPhone was a breakthrough product compared to the computers that the company was selling, and the same was also for the iPod even before that. So all the new products that the company built after the computers, like the iPod, the iPad, the iPhone, were all uh, breakthrough products because they created whole new markets compared. To the existing one and uh, you don't go from a computer to an iphone with a continuous innovation framework where you get better and better at computing instead you go to it with a breakthrough approach where you actually use a different kind of loop so in a continuous innovation loop you use a sort of again um, a way of thinking of improving the product on a continuous basis by getting uh, feedback from users as quickly as possible and improving and gathering and uh, building in this feedback within the product on a breakthrough innovation front instead you use a different kind of loop a loop made of wondering made of uh, intuition about what uh, customers may want uh, but also what they also by keep, keeping in mind that they don't know yet what they want in the future so you reason from first principles and from there you do bold experimentation meaning that you start launching product that might seem completely new to the market that you're fine from there so as you can see with technological modeling we want to cover both spectrum of the the the, the business uh, and the way the business is evolving so that in the long term you try to balance things out of course this is not an approach that is going to guarantee you success but it might reduce the chances of failure in the long term because on the one side you're improving the product on a continuous basis which today has become the standard and then on the other side you also explore a breakthrough innovation uh, with a sort of disruptive uh, R&D approach and this loop as we saw is completely different from the continuous innovation loop this is a loop that starts by wondering and also by 
having a different mindset where you say okay here i want to know from customers what they want every day and i want to improve the product here i'm saying you know customers probably don't really know yet what they want so i can reason from first principles and launch something unique that they might not know yet they want but probably they will love it once we launch that's the different kind of mindset that you're gonna have and this is what technological modeling is about